So now let us see the sexual reproduction in plants. I already told you the flower is the reproductive part. Unit, better we say unit, it consists of reproductive parts. Some flowers they consist of both male and female parts. Some flowers consist of either male or female parts. If the flower consists of either male or female reproductive organs, you call it as unisexual flower. Example, papaya watermelon. If the flower consists of both male and female reproductive organs, you call it as bisexual flower. Example, hibiscus mustard. Here we have different parts of a flower. This is a bisexual flower, which is having both the female and male reproductive parts. So we have already studied about the structure of flower. It consists of different parts like a flower consists of a base called as thalamus. This is called as thalamus on which all the other parts are embedded. This is called as the peduncle of the leaf and here this is called as sepal and this is the colored part to attract the insects called as petal and this is the male reproductive part andracium or stamens or stamens male part and this one is the female reproductive part pistil female part so we know the sexual reproduction the concept of sexual reproduction male gamete fuses with female gamete where is the female gamete here inside the pistil pistil has got different parts this is stigma the top part is called a stigma and this tube like structure is called as style and this is called as ovary. Inside the ovary female gametes are there, inside the ovary ovules are there, one or many ovules. The ovules consist of female cells which is located here. So for the fusion with the female gamete, the male gamete has to travel from where? from its source of production here where the male gamete is produced here in the anthers so the stamen consists of a head like part called as anther the anther consists of pollen we see the yellow color powdery substance present in the flower the yellow color powdery substance is the pollen pollen consists of male gametes now this pollen it has to travel from here to here how it happens by various natural means insects help in the pollination many of the insects they visit the flower for nectar during this process the pollen sticks to the legs of the insects when the insects visit different flowers the pollen is dropped onto the stigmas of various flowers from there the trans transfer of male gamete takes place not only insect wind water and other means are also helpful Various natural agents are helpful in the process of pollination. Pollination is nothing but the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma of um, a flower. If it takes place within the flower, you call it as self-pollination. If it takes place between two different flowers, you call it as cross-pollination. Two different flowers in the sense not of two different flowers of different species of same species so if it takes place cross pollination whatever may be self pollination or cross pollination that is it happens because that is with the help of agents like wind water or insects major contribution is done by the insects for the transfer of pollen so here from the anther to stigma the pollen reaches Stigma has got some sticky substance which enable the pollen to stick. Once the pollen is stick to the stigma, it produces a tube called as pollen tube. How long? So long. This pollen tube, it grows and grows and grows and extends into the ovary. It passes into the ovary. The male gametes present in the pollen, they travel like this through this pollen tube and they pass down and finally they reach the ovule and inside the ovule female gametes are there 
so there the male gametes enter into the ovule once they enter into the ovule it fuses with the female gamete to form this zygote so here zygote is formed this zygote once the zygote is formed inside the ovule what happens the flower loses all its parts the ovary increases in its size the ovary becomes the fruit and what happens to the ovule ovule becomes the seed then what is this zygote zygote becomes the embryo embryo is covered by seed seed is covered by fruit so fruit consists of seed seed consists of embryo seed does not contain only embryo seed contains embryo and cotyledons to provide food to the embryo once the seed is planted the embryo starts growing into a new plant by using the materials present inside the seed you call it as germination that means the seed it grows into your plant so once the fertilization takes place the ovule turns to a seed the ovary turns to a fruit that means flower changes to fruit which part of the flower changes to fruit you are eating a fruit which part you are eating the ovary of the flower is changed to fruit you are throwing away the seeds which part of the flower you are throwing away ovule where is the baby plant inside the seed seed is not the baby plant seed contains some packed food material nutrients and embryo embryo is a part of seed the embryo is the baby plant it grows into your plant by using the materials present in the seed so this process is called as seed germination you might have done various activities experiments in your third fourth fifth classes about seed germination various conditions necessary for seed germination you can relate those things to here the sexual reproduction in plants so this is the way how the sexual reproduction takes place in plants